Hi. This is part five of Psalm 106, and probably I guess I'd call it part two of debunking uh, Reformed theology, uh, a theology that has reformed what was originally formed from God. They've changed it. They've altered the doctrines of Christ. And the Word of God says that there are many spirits in the last days that will be seducing spirits, offering uh, doctrines of devils to pull people away from the true faith of Christ. Now, in Psalm 28, there are several examples in Bible verses and statements that are there that are, help us to interpret the history of Israel and what they went through that proves as clear evidence that this idea of predestination, that God's in charge of everything, God predestined everything to happen the way it happens, or you might be one of the elect, you've been chosen to be saved and go to heaven, and other people have been you know, created to go to hell. It debunks those two, uh, let me say, interpretations of those two doctrines. Of course, there is a doctrine of predestination, and there is a doctrine of election. I'm not getting into that right now, but it's not as Reformed theology explains it. So I want to go through a couple more scriptures here uh, with you. Verse 28 of Psalm 106 says this, They, Israel, joined themselves also unto Baalapur. This was a false prophet idolatry, and they, it says they ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him, God, to anger with their own inventions, and the plague broke in on them. Now, my friends, doctrines of demons are meant to deceive you into allowing and opening up the door of plagues. Those plagues can be sickness, death, poverty. All of those things are contrary to the will of God. And, uh, and, and the suffering here, they sacrificed to the dead, or they sacrificed of the dead. And they provoked him. Again, this was not God's will for them to do that. They provoked him. When God got angry with them and punished them and chastened them, it was for a reason. It wasn't because God predestined it to happen. Verse 32 says this, They angered him, Israel angered God, also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit so that he spoke unadvisably with his lips. This is a reference to the second time that uh, God had provided water for them supernaturally. The first time, when they were out in the wilderness, God told Moses, take the rod, strike the rock, and the water will come out, and it was enough water to take care and satisfy over three million people. Then years later, they murmured and complained again, and this time God said, go to the rock and take the rod with you, but he did not tell them to strike the rock, but rather he said, speak to the rock and tell it the water to come out. But Moses, instead of speaking to the rock, spoke unadvisably to the people, scolded the people. Then he hit the rock. The water didn't come out with the rod. And then he hit the rock, the, the rock again with the rod. And this time the water came out. And immediately God spoke to Moses and said, Because you have done this, because you failed to obey me in this, it, and, and for their sakes it's going to be ill with you, you will not enter into the kingdom or uh, into the promised land. And, of course, Moses died before Israel was allowed to go in. Uh, under the leadership of Joshua. Uh, verse 34, when they did go into the land, it says that they, Israel, did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but they mingled among the heathen, and they learned their works. Was that the will of God? Was that predestined by God? Was that the elect, uh, the plan for the elect of God? They learned their works, they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Verse 37, Yea, they sacrificed their own sons and daughters unto devils. That's how bad it is. Now you'd say, oh my goodness, that, that's a terrible, terrible crime. They killed their own sons and daughters. And my friends, you say, well, wow, that's barbaric. Well, we're doing it in America today. This abortion on demand is, is really what it is. It's a sacrifice. Save your life. Make your life better. You choose to have a better life by not having that child. It is a diabolical sin against God. It says they, all, they, they sacrificed their sons unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters. Verse 39. Uh, and, and again, I want to ask the question, do you think that was God's will? Those of you that are Christians and you think that abortion is the will of God or the right of a person? Verse 39. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions own imaginations. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people. Was it God's will for them to do these things and create wrath inside of him? Absolutely not. 
Finally, verse 43 and verse 44. Many times he delivered them, but they provoked him with their counsel. They brought low to their were, they were brought low by their own iniquity. Nevertheless, God in his mercy, and folks, we're living in it, I'm living in it, I know that I've experienced it. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry and remembered the covenant that he made with him. Let's cry out to God for mercy, and let's let him change us. Let's let him alter our path and our lifestyle, our behavior, our con conduct. Let's let him get control of our appetites in this world, and let's go do the real right thing. You say, what's the right thing? Well, it's not a movie. It's not that movie that they made, Do the Right Thing. It is doing what the Word of God has to say. Open up the Word of God. It will make a difference in your life. Let it be your counsel and stop going after your own inventions and your own imaginations. We can do that, my friends. We should do it for a Savior that laid his life out for us. God bless you.